Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is a Tic Tac bag and it is inspired by a project that my six-year-old son Jacob made and this is his one. He said to me, Mummy, I want a box for my Tic Tacs, please. And so he got himself a piece of cardstock out. He wrapped it round. I did the scoring with his help and then he did all of the sticking. <laughs> did a good job didn't he for six and then he did all of the decorating himself he tied his own ribbon he's absolutely covered it in candy dots and he's taken one of our little wooden embellishments and written Jacob's Tic Tacs on now there's nothing left and I did have to practically manhandle this back off him so that I could use it as inspiration but I thought it was gorgeous but I liked the little speech bubble which is why I've then done my version slightly different measurements of so that the Tic Tacs fitted better <laughs> they were a bit of a tight squeeze um, but I think he did a good job and he has completely inspired my project there were originally plenty of packets of Tic Tacs there's only one left he did break into this one and unfortunately he ripped the back of it so um, yeah he wanted the Tic Tacs out so you're going to have to trust that they are in there you can hear them but I'm going to do a slightly different version but yeah he chose the Blackberry Bliss so I went with the Blackberry Bliss too, and then I decided I was going to do a Mossy Meadow version. This time round, put those all over there, I'm going for Lost Lagoon. Beautiful colour. It's five and a half by five inches is the piece of paper you need, which is 14 by 13 centimetres. So not very big, so you can get plenty out of the sheet of cardstock. And on the long side, so make sure that you've got the five and a half inch side up at the top. We're going to score this at three quarters of an inch, 2.5, three and a quarter and five inches which is two, six and a half, eight and a half and thirteen centimetres. Then you turn it round and score it just once at three quarters of an inch which is two centimetres. So the finished dimensions of the bag when it's made, um, oh, drop everything on the floor, is, um, oh, I can't remember what it is, well it's one and three quarters that way and three quarters of an inch that way, which is four and a half by two, and to the highest part, four and a quarter inches, that's going to be about uh, 11 centimetres. So that's how big the bag is. And yeah, it holds a, bag of a box of Tic Tacs. British size, I understand that apparently different countries have different size Tic Tacs, so maybe do a test run first. That would be my advice. So just fold on all the score lines. So you, see, you can see, I went with the spotty bit because of all his grand use of the candy dots and pearls. He's a bit of an addict for those at the moment, actually. He loves them. Puts candy dots on everything. So, OK, I'm sorry, I'm chatting and not showing you where to cut. So you've got the long, you know, we're holding it this way, so you've got your long score lines there. Bottom right, there is a little skinny rectangle. So grab that and cut that away. That's the one bit we need to get rid of. And then come round and cut all of those. I'm going to put the box together in a minute because I want to show you where to do the how to get the ribbon to go like this. But I want to stamp on it and I'm not really sure which one to go with. I'm going with the just saying step, which has got the matching word bubbles. But I, well, I've done love yet and I've done the you're the best. I think I'm going to go with G thanks actually. Yeah, I think I'll try that one. Oh, talk about decisive. Okay, so onto my block. Oh, I didn't get any white out. Oops. Let's grab a scrap. Here we go. So, a scrap of white. Lost Lagoon matching ink. And then, there we go. I'm going to chop around this, I think, actually, because I don't, because it's a framelit, so it needs to go through my big shot. And, oops. Bring my big shot over here. And that's going to go right out of you. So I've got my magnetic platform, which is kind of essential, really, when you're using framelits round a stamped image. So I've got my magnetic platform, one cutting plate down, I've got my wording, and it's this bubble here I need. So I'm just going to position that over the top. Oh, I was spot on first go. There we go. Second cutting plate over the top. 
and just send it all through. Oh, crack, crack. That's normal. I had somebody in the team ask recently if that was normal. It is. It's just where all of the, all of the weight that, that slipped. Oh no, it slipped. Oh, let's do that again, shall we? This is what happens. I can't look overhead because you'd get my back of my head in the camera. Let's try that again. I'm going to stand and look, try and look over the top of the camera. Okay, that is lined up. I'm just going to do it off camera because um, if I try and bring the big shot back, oh, there we go, crack, crack. If I try and bring, bring it back on screen, I'll take out the tripod. There we go, that's better. Right, let's just carry on filming through the bloopers. So, okay, so I've got that. And then with our new set of, these are the, the celebration items, the extra ones that came in just for March. We've got the most gorgeous buttons and beautiful twine that comes with them as an accessory pack. And I know we're probably only days away from the end here. Uh, at the end of celebration but seriously if you can get hold of these do because these in colors are the ones that are going to last all the way through until the summer next year so you know why miss out they're gorgeous aren't they and these are the same size as our tiny buttons in our button packs so, okay so we're going to have the little button up there just to match to match Jacob's original ideas I'm going to pop this box together. So I'm going to take some adhesive, which I'm going to go with snail. So run it down the tab to one side. And then bring in the sides and the back. This is the back because that's going to be the front. And seal it up. And assume that you're going to put some tic tacs in there. We'll pretend. Pinch in the top and then grab the one eighth of an inch handheld punch to get a little hole in there, so roughly in the middle. You're going through two layers at the same time and then this is where the baker's twine comes in. So you feed it through both holes so through both holes I'm going to grab my stylus here to help through both cut off a length and then you come in from the back over the top of the back and then we're going to go in through there so if I hold it like that so we're going to try to see where the light is let's see if I can get that to go through without trying to get my hands in the way So if I hold it like that, can you see how that's going? It's going over the back of that one, but, so that both parts come out there. I did it a while ago, oh, ages ago, and I, I called it a Pandora-inspired bag because I bought a, um, a Pandora ring and they tied the bag like that, and I thought it was so marvellous that I needed to do it myself. So tie off a bow, and that just keeps it closed. Isn't that lovely? It's so clever because you just look at it and go, oh, how's that staying shut? I don't know. Trim off those wispy ends that I've just trashed. A couple of dimensionals on the back of here that I've put down somewhere. And that is my bag inspired by my Jacob. He's my real crafty helper. Oh, every day he'd be in here crafting if he could. I love it though. Oh, makes me very happy and it's a really good excuse to get the paper and inks out. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see your Tic Tac project soon too. Bye.